Our next applied topic is looking at elasticity of demand, which is essentially the study of the relationship between the price of an item and the demand for that item. So we've already established the idea that revenue can be calculated as our price per item times the demand for that item. So what that means is we would have two ways to increase revenue. Since revenue is directly proportional to both price and demand, it means our revenue would increase if we can increase our price or if we can increase demand. Now, in general, increasing demand is much more complicated than increasing price. Price is very easy to control. We can simply just change the price that we're asking for any particular item. The problem with increasing price, though, is that it has a negative impact on demand. So what we have graphed here are two different price demand curves. And what we can assume is that for a given product, we're at some price point P, which is the horizontal axis. For that price point P, we have a certain demand level X. What we can see is that if we increase our price point, then as we read that graph from left to right, the demand for our item is actually going to decrease. And we can think about this very intuitively if we consider something like travel. The more expensive travel becomes, the fewer people who would choose to travel. But if we consider the opposite, if we were to decrease our profit, or I'm sorry, decrease our price point, what we'd see is that as we read that graph then from right to left, what we're actually seeing is our demand increases. So price and demand have this inverse relationship, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a linear relationship. With the graph on the right, we have a nonlinear relationship between price and demand, but we see that same relationship. As we increase our price point, we're going to see our demand decrease. So what we want to do is identify how much we can change our price, or more specifically, if we do change our price, what impact that would have on demand. So if our price for a certain item changes by C percent, so C for change here, then our change in demand is calculated as E of P times C percent. So in this case, E of P is a new concept or a new notion that we're going to be introducing here. E of P represents the elasticity of demand at our current price point P. So what that means is we have a relatively simple way of calculating how much impact the change in price will have on our change in demand. When we evaluate elasticity, we'll have three possible scenarios. Either our value for elasticity will be between 0 and 1. In that case, that would mean that our demand is inelastic. So here we can consider, say, a 10% increase in the price of an item times some elasticity value that's between 0 and 1, let's say 0 0.8. If we were to take 10% times 0 0.8, we would get 0 0.08 or 8%. So what this would mean is for a 10% increase in price, demand would only drop by 8%. So we have a larger increase in price with a smaller decrease in demand. So that would be a good scenario. We can increase our price, demand will drop, but at a smaller rate. So overall, we would generate more revenue. If our value for elasticity ends up being something greater than one, then we call, or we would say that demand is elastic. So if we consider a similar example, a 10% increase on in our price point, 
times some value for elasticity that's more than 1, let's say 1 1.2. That re result would be 0 0.12 or 12%. So what we would end up with is for a 10% increase in price, we would have a 12% drop in demand. So that drop in demand would be a larger drop than our increase in price. So we would end up actually losing revenue. So in these two scenarios, in the first one we increase price, had a smaller decrease in demand, so that means increasing our price would actually increase our revenue. In the second scenario, where our elasticity is greater than 1, our 10% increase in price would result in a 12% decrease in demand. So in this case, increasing our price yielded a decrease in revenue. Or we could flip that around to say that if we wanted to increase revenue, what we should do is actually decrease our price. And then our last scenario is when elasticity is exactly equal to 1. That's when we would say that demand is unit. So what would happen here is if we had that same 10% change in our price point, times an elasticity of 1, it would mean that our change in demand is also 10%. So we increased our price point, but demand decreased by exactly the same amount. So what that means is we would have no impact on our revenue. Whether we increase price or decrease price, or we could just say more generally, a price change or changing our price would not impact revenue. So what we'll be looking at in this module is establish, establishing the formula for elasticity of demand, looking at how we can calculate that result, and then classifying demand as inelastic, elastic, or unit, and then providing an interpretation that matches each of these scenarios.